Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So let's start here. Nobody, absolutely nobody, wants their art to be a stressful, frustrating, anxiety-inducing experience. In fact, everyone would love their art to be a joy-filled escape from the world, an escape from frustration, anxiety, and stress. And yet one of the things I've noticed is that so many creatives bring this upon themselves by entering what's called choice overload, by creating this situation for themselves where the number of creative options that they have available to them that they present themselves with has a negative effect on their enjoyment and their ability to create art, which obviously are very much linked as well, because if you really want to create art and you're not able to do it because you're hampering yourself with too many choices, that's going to bring down your enjoyment straight away. And the lower your enjoyment, the less likely you are to want to create art. And it builds up one of these vicious circles that people get trapped in. So the bottom line of this is that if you have too many options at your disposal, then your workflow is going to suffer. You'll face frustration, anxiety. You will face delays in your ability to get work done. And for a lot of people, even an inability to make any progress at all. And this is one of those things that unfortunately does lead a lot of people over a number of years to eventually abandon trying to write music in any way, shape or form. Whereas if we flip this around and you're mindful of reducing your creative options, then you're going to be more confident in your choices. You'll of course experience less stress and less second guessing and doubt, and you'll be far more efficient and effective at writing music. Because choice overload has a paralyzing effect on our decision making process. And creativity is all about making decisions. And very often it's about making decisions quickly so that we stay in a state of flow. And maybe you can relate to this. You've been absolutely flying along with a piece of music and then you're not sure what you're going to do next. And you've got this overwhelming array of plugins, whether they're synths or even a selection of samples or different ways you could process something or many different ways you could take the music in. And it becomes so overbearing that you end up finding yourself paralyzed and not moving forward at all and completely getting knocked out of flow and knocked out of that blissful state um, that we can get into when we're really not just music, any kind of creative endeavor whatsoever. Now, there's a number of experiences that that come with this, and perhaps um, you'll resonate with some of these. The first one, we've talked about this idea of stress, but I really want to double down on this because this is really, really important. If our workflow becomes really sluggish and at every step of the way we feel there are barriers and issues, there becomes this inability for us to make decisions in any way because we're presented with an absolute overload of different options, then not only does this build up the stress and the anxiety, but unfortunately, and you know, we've got to talk about these things, there's no point hiding this stuff, um, this can lead to issues with people's mental health very much can play a role in people experiencing depression um, and certainly anxiety. A lot of people are very anxious about their music because they're not making very much progress at all. Everything feels like they're crawling through quicksand. It's something they want to do, something they're passionate about doing, but they're not seeing any progress whatsoever. They are finding it impossible to make decisions because there's just too many options. Maybe even sitting in front of the computer going, where on earth do I start? Or at any point in the process, think of all of the myriad of choices that you may have created for yourself and you find yourself um, avoiding even going in the studio because it builds up so much anxiety for you. And then if you are in the studio, perhaps you can relate to um, not making a decision to or delaying making a decision because there are so many options available and you might find yourself with something perfectly good to move forward with, like a sound that is perfectly good. It's, it will absolutely work, 
But instead, you're like, oh, I'm gonna try another sound, or I'll just tweak this, I'll just tweak this a little bit more, a little bit more, and you're actually delaying making the decision and the choice to move forward. You're constantly pushing it back. And as a result, very little is getting done. And as we know with music, if we keep listening to the same loop over and over and over again, it can then lose that initial buzz. It can start to become boring to us. We get fatigued of what we're listening to. And then again, we can end up walking away from that piece of music. And here's something that I found quite interesting as well. Choice overload leads to decreased satisfaction and confidence in the decisions that you make. So you find yourself second guessing a lot of what you do. So the more choices that you have, it raises your expectations about the choice that you're going to make. So you think, oh, I, you know, I've got all these choices, therefore it's got to be this good. And that can happen on a subconscious level. It might not be something we're super aware of, but I've got all this equipment, I've got all these things, I've got all of these plugins, therefore I expect that what I'm going to choose is going to be a better choice. And if we do choose something, we start to second guess and say, well, there's, I've got this other thing, maybe I should try that, maybe I should just use that compressor, or maybe oh, that one looks better, maybe I should use that. And there's a lot of second guessing and then that can lead to a regret about the choice that we made. Oh, maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. As you're probably, you know, you're thinking about this, if this is you, if you're like, yeah, good, blimey, I find myself doing that. I've got something and I just go, oh, I'm just going to pick another thing because I've got all of these uh, these array of options to, to me that you find yourself then doing anything but being creative. It becomes a real uphill kind of slog, if you like. And all of this ultimately leads to what we call zero outcome. Not only is it incredibly draining on our energy, on our life force, um, it also makes us less likely to choose anything at all. Just walk away from it. Like it becomes so arduous that we just say, okay, I'm, I'm just going to walk away from this decision, whether that's in our music or anything in our life. And if you jump back, there's a brilliant kind of conversation on this uh, that I had with Nick Muir in episode 64. And Nick talks about this idea of stop trying to find the perfect sound. It's like, for God's sake, just pick a thing and move forwards with it because you've got to keep the momentum going when it comes to creativity. And at the end of the day, ultimately, what is a perfect sound? How do you know where this sound might go later in the track or what other sounds you might add and how it might interact with them? So very often this kind of perfect storm of too many choices in all of the myriad of different um, aspects of writing a piece of music leads to zero outcome at all. And at the very, very bottom of that is this thing called choice overload. So it's really worth being aware of this, being very cognizant of this. Now, we pulled up some studies on this because I was really curious to find out about the research that's been done into this. Get this. This one's fantastic. It's a study from Columbia University. And all they did really, really simply was they set up a stand with a load of jam samples on it, just like you might find at you know, a fate or a fair. Um... And they alternated between having 24 different types of jam on the stand or just six, 24 or six. And here's what they found. 60% of people stopped to sample jam when there were 24 types, but only 3% of them made the decision between the jams and bought one. Now, when they alternated it down to six, 40% of people stopped, but 30% of that group purchased the jar. They made the decision. That's the one I like, and they purchased it. So less turned out to be more. That is a 10x difference in somebody choosing and taking action from 3% to 30%. And interestingly, what we also can see there is that people are attracted to more options. So if you find yourself, oh, I'm, I'm going to buy that sample back. Oh, look, there's a deal on these 10,000 kick drums. Let's stick them to the 100,000 kick drums I've already got. Oh, I'm just going to have that. I'll just add this. You know, Choice, choice, choice. People are attracted to having many, many options. But when they've got them, they are significantly less likely to act on the choices that they've created for themselves. Now, another study that went... Um, 
or rather not so much a study, I guess, but researchers who really looked into choice overload found that four factors are influential in explaining when choice overload is most likely to come up for you. So if you really pay attention to this, you can look at these different things and say, well, how do I reverse this and make sure that this is not true for me and for the creative process I follow? So this is from Kellogg School of Management. The first factor that is likely to lead to choice overload is around the decision goal. So if you don't know what you're trying to achieve, so for example, your preset surfing or your randomly hit and hope arranging with no idea of where you're heading, what you're really looking for. So perhaps you could uh, be writing a track and I think most of us have been there and you're like a bit of a dead end, what do I do next? Instead of actually getting clear on what it is that I want to achieve, it's easy just to go into the browser and start flicking through options. Flicking, 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 hoping for the best. Now, when that happens, you are much more likely to enter into choice overload because you're not clear on where you're trying to get to. And this is a big thing that we do in FMM. I'm huge on this, is consistently saying, okay, at this stage of the production process, you might wanna consider this. Or if you're hitting this workflow block, you might wanna consider that. It's a big part of the coaching that I do as well. It's really important to get clear on the outcome rather than into this hit and hope kind of strategy, not knowing where you're really going. So the second thing that they identified was something they've called decision task difficulty. How difficult is it for you to make the decision? So what they discovered is that, for example, if it's something that uh, needs to be decided quickly, i.e. there's uh, time pressure on this, that is a factor that can lead to, tie, uh, to sorry, choice overload. Now, creativity loves speed. It's one of my sayings. Creativity loves speed. The ability to work quickly. So there's kind of an inherent pressure on making a choice anyway when you're in creative flow because the more you dilly and you dally, the more likely you are to just fall out of that zone being in the pocket. Also, in addition to that, a lot of people have a certain amount of time that they can spend on their music, right? And you want to make the most of that time. So we have people inside of FMM who, you know, have super busy uh, jobs that they might be, you know, things that require them to spend a lot of time in their work periodically, maybe got young families as well. And they could have 15 minutes a day that they're going into the studio. So they want to be making decisions quickly. They want a structure and a strategy and a way of thinking that enables them to decide quickly. Whereas someone who doesn't have that, who's just going into the studio, right, I want to make the most of this 30 minutes or this hour, and then they're like, oh, I don't know what to decide, I don't know what to do, the pressure starts to mount up, and then that time's gone, it's like, well, where's my next window of opportunity? And it becomes more and more pressured and more and more likely that you'll fall into this choice overload and just be completely paralyzed and often just avoid the studio as a result. So that's the first two. Next up is something they call choice set complexity choice set complexity and this is to say that if you have a number of options in front of you is there a dominant option and how much information do you have about each of the choices available to you so put another way how much do you know about what you are doing so even if you know what it is that you want to achieve and where your, go where your end goal is, when you look at the different options in front of you, how much do you know about them? Is one, do you know enough that one of them is really standing out to you? If you do, clearly you're not likely to, or as likely to enter into choice overload. But if, however, you are someone who's randomly watching a bunch of different tutorials, you're buying loads of different synths, loads of different samples, um, loads of different compressors, you don't know how to use any one of those, you're not sure which tool is best for the job, you've just got an array of different options in front of you, it becomes particularly overwhelming. Then the first thing is, uh, the fourth thing, sorry, is preference uncertainty. What is your preference? So that's, you might say with this one, a good way of relating this to uh, music would be, you know, what's your sound? 
And if you remember back, I can't remember the number of the podcast, we explored this and the equation that, or the formula rather, I think is a better way of describing this that I presented was authenticity plus quantity leads to your sound. So you don't go um, discovering your sound, your sound discovers you. And that happens by you being authentic plus writing a, a high quantity of music. Now, clearly, if you're struggling with a lot of choice overload, you're not going to get a lot of music uh, written for a start. But secondly, if you're not sure what your preference is, what does authenticity mean to you? You're going to struggle even more. And that might sound like a bit of a bizarre thing to say, like what's authentic to you, but do you really know what you like and you don't like in music? And you say, well, I like tech house. Well, all tech house? I like techno. Well, all techno? And this is really interesting when we start to dig into this. And I ran through an exercise. Um, in fact, we're halfway through it. There's some more that I'm going to bolt onto it um, for the members of my mastermind group. And... I built this exercise to help them get clarity about their preferences. Now, when they did, when they started to really get very, very clear on what was lighting up them up about music, guess what happened? They got a lot more excited about their productions. They got a lot clearer on the direction they wanted to go in. And as well as having the preferences, they got clearer on their decision goals as well. And by doing that, they're able to reduce the number of choices that they've got. They're able to get more clear on what's dominant about the the options that they might have that will get them to the preferences they want. And as a result, a lot of them said, we're just a lot more lit up about writing music as a result of this. So what to do about all of this information? Well, bottom line here is trim your choices. Pick a mentor. Pick someone who resonates with you and stick with that person. Pick a methodology, pick a creative process, something, of course, that is proven, that you can see is getting results for someone just like you who is getting the results you want to get. And then stick with it. Now, of course, if you stick with it for a big chunk of time and it isn't working, yeah, go and pick one other methodology the issue comes with saying oh i'm gonna try this 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 and work with this person and this person and this person becomes overwhelming same with your tools pick a handful of them be selective what tools work best for you and the music that you are making pick them learn them stick with them and only go on somewhere like youtube or a site that's got a gazillion different tutorials on it and a thousand ways to skin a cat Only go on there when you need to and not as your default method for spending time. Only when you need to and not your default method for spending time. Not just procrastinating, but just like when I'm on the sofa, I'll just kick back and watch some tutorials. Think the more you do that, the more techniques, options, opinions, things that come at you, the more likely you are to enter into choice overload. And of course, I'm sure you can think of a whole bunch of other different ways when you think about preference, uncertainty, choice set complexity, decision task difficulty, and having a decision goal. I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that are firing off in your mind that you can do as well. Because at the end of the day, this is a very real thing, and it's a serious thing. We talked about how this can affect people's mental health. Too many choices, and we're just talking about music. You could have this in all different areas of your life. So, bottom line, too many creative choices, workflow is going to suffer, frustration, anxiety, depression, delays, i.e. much slower finishing your work because you can't make up your mind, too many choices, too many steps through the production process, and then unfortunately often zero outcome, an inability to make any progress at all. On the flip side, if you are mindful of reducing the choices, the creative options in front of you, then you'll be more confident in those choices. There'll be less second guessing. As a result, less stress, less doubt, and you'll be far more efficient and effective at creating your art. And that is an upward spiral because the more that you write and the more authentic you are, the more you learn about what you like, the more effective you become at trimming options and the momentum builds and builds and builds. 
So I hope you found this useful. I hope uh, there's something for you to take away to help you improve uh, the enjoyment and uh, the outcome of the art that you're writing. The show notes are at finishmoremusic.com forward slash 194. Easy for you to say, finishmoremusic.com forward slash 194. And um, as always, what resonated with you here? Which one of those kind of pitfalls do you find yourself most leaning into? Which one do you feel creates the biggest issue for you? And what are you going to try and do about it? Or do you just want to reach out to me and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Any ideas on what I could do about it? If so, hit me up on Instagram at I am Keith Mills. Fire over a DM. Promise to read it. Promise to get back to you. Until next time, take care and happy music making.